Hello everyone, and welcome. I'm joined here, if not by visuals, but by voice, uh, by my friend Steve. Hello everybody. So this is the third class uh, dining saloon on our deck. This is basically where all the third class passengers uh, had their dinner. But I am curious, there, there was a question I had for you, Steve, which was, did they have breakfast and lunch here, or was it just dinner? No, all, all three meals were served in the third class dining room. Um, and they did two seatings for each meal. Uh, the room served about 400 people, which was a little over than half of the capacity of third class. So they would have two seatings for each meal. Uh, the um, uh, Of course, they probably, as the, uh, the ship was uh, declining in capacity over in the later years, they probably reduced it to one seating, but uh, it, in the heyday, it definitely was a two seating process. And look what I see here: a kosher pantry. <laughs> yes, that's pretty... most of your most of your uh, Jewish passengers were definitely traveling by third class. Third class dining room. I have a couple pictures here to show everybody as we talk. Okay, so the uh, the upper paneling that you see is a lightly grained sycamore. The, uh, the lower paneling that you see is a coral-colored mahogany dado. Uh, and the chairs themselves were of uh, mahogany themselves. The panels, you, you can see one in the far distance there on the right, uh, in the distance, that was a uh, one of the eight uh, etched glass mirrors that were depicted of sporting scenes. Uh, they had uh, golfing, fishing, hunting... And those were uh, created by uh, C. Cameron Bailey. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I believe only one exists on board today. Uh, the other seven are unknown uh, in their location. This would be the port side of the uh, dining room, which in the later years was actually devoted to uh, ship's officers and was partitioned off to some degree and remained that way through... Uh, uh, through the rest of the war and then after the war, uh, this is a pre-war photo here. You can see another one of the uh, the etched glass mirror panels in the background there. It, so part of this this dining room somewhere was used as like a officer's dining space. You said they, they might have sectioned it off after or during the war and then it would have stayed that way after the war? Correct. Yeah. yeah. It, it remained as more of a ship's officer's uh, dining room. Uh after the war and was semi partitioned off. I'm not exactly sure how it was partitioned. I've never seen photographs of it, but I understood that it was partitioned to some degree. Um, and that remained that way until its arrival into Long Beach in 67. Uh, oh, there we go. I like this photograph cause it's a nice, it's a nice big high quality photograph. I can zoom in on it kind of, and you can see more of the, you know, the detail. I like this, uh, the, the, what, what wood was this on the bottom? You said that's a uh, that's a uh, coral colored mahogany. Some passengers dining in the third class dining room. I, this was taken. I'm going to say 50s. You see these these folks here actually look like they're enjoying themselves. You know, <laughs> a lot of people when they think of third class, thanks to you know stories of Titanic, you'd think that people in third class are just miserable people you know like but on the queen mary third class was a pretty comfortable uh accommodation all right okay so right. yeah if you can zoom into that that area right there that's wonderful there's something wrong with this no no that that is correct oh my <laughs> that is correct yes yeah. i was like this can't be the right deck it is so it, it to understand how things were working with the queen mary and the conversion process um diners club international became a partner uh, uh they were actually going to be the master leasey of the, of the ship and they had intended to make our deck uh completely a uh, a space for conventions uh special events catering banquets and that was going to utilize the third class dining room which we're talking about now the first class dining room midship and then the second class dining room towards the stern unfortunately 
Diners Club International was bought out by another company uh, in 1970. Uh, in stepped uh, specialty restaurants uh, owned by a man named David Talishan. He owned the Reef Restaurant, which is actually still there in, in front of the ship today, uh, right there at, in Long Beach. Uh, he became the master lessee of the ship and completely changed his idea of how the ship was going to operate. The, plan for, the master plan for the Diners Club was to create a almost a ship long corridor leading from the first class uh, entry entry foyer, foyer through the third class dining room into the first class foyer and then beyond through the main kitchens and then into the second class dining room which uh, which he's showing there on the on the uh, pictures now the demolition of this area took place before the ship was towed to Pier J the main kitchens were completely gutted prior to the ship arriving at Pier J. It was basically left as a blank slate uh, for the creation of the new kitchens that would be installed at, at a later time. Uh, but the second and third class dining rooms were left pretty much intact, other than the removal of some bulkheads to create that corridor that was going to be on the port side. When the ship arrived at Pier J, specialty restaurants had made a decision to change their operations to prom deck instead of our deck as their main source of commissary and uh so the the first class restaurant the second class restaurant and the third class restaurant were pretty much untouched and left there was some storage used but they were still pretty much as as is uh after the even the opening in 1971 Here's the before, you guys, so you can see how sectioned off it is and stuff, but it's a nice big open space, essentially, um, yeah. with the funnel hatch in the center. Now, if I go to what it looks like today, you can see that they've further just completely walled off many areas of it. The funnel hatch has been converted to an egress stairway. Um, but aside from that, everything else is just completely sectioned off. There's some large hallways here that pass through the first class pool. The majority of the third class dining room was actually available uh, for display. They decided to make it uh, viewable to the public as to when that was actually done. I, I don't have a year. Uh, but up until about 1981, it was actually on the walking tour. Uh, but the port side of the ship, where they had gutted part of the dining room for this corridor, um, was turned into a, a passageway that leads aft through the uh, first-class swimming pool and then into the first-class foyer, and, which is basically how it's still laid out today. There's... Uh, a room called the Blue Room. So this is the Blue Room, which is one of the, it's, I believe it's the first room on the port side as you go aft uh, from the, the third class uh, entryway there. Um, this is, <laughs> it's a little bit neater looking than this, when this photo was taken. Uh, but it basically contains all of the original linen drawings from John Brown. Uh, there's also a lot of drawings from uh, the U.S. Navy during World War II, any modifications that were made to the ship uh, during the war. Uh, this doesn't contain much in the way of Long Beach drawings. This is pretty much original drawings. The Long Beach drawings were kept forward, but basically there is a drawing to every possible thing you could imagine for the ship, from toasters to... Uh, large capacity uh, mixing machines in the main kitchens, light fixtures, electrical schematics, everything that was needed uh, and designed to build the ship. Uh, there's at least two or three copies, if not more, uh, stored in this room. And, and, and definitely looking at that picture, it's a lot neater looking now <laughs> than, it, than it was then. So this is starboard side, correct? I'm oh, sorry, there we go. Yeah, the starboard, starboard side looking forward. Um, this is this is a picture that was taken 
a few years back, actually. So the starboard side of the dining room remained as part of the walking tour of the ship and remained pretty much intact. Uh, the light fixtures still had their um, their colored of uh, the um, they were a plastic diffuser over the light bulbs. Today, you just see the light bulbs there. Um, and that remained until about, oh, 1982, I believe, uh, when things were changed to where our deck actually started becoming a an operation. Uh, the first class restaurant was actually now being used uh, for the uh, Sunday brunch. So the t there was a necessity for table storage and chair storage for the uh, for the room. And the first, the, the third class dining room area became the table and chair storage for that, uh, that use, unfortunately. Yeah, and we can see here uh, the damage that's been done to the original woodwork uh, from all the carts and stuff holding the tables right. and the chairs just being forced up against the wall like that. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, you know, it's, you know, <laughs> fixing the barn door after the horses come home. They they have since put up um, a plywood barricade to help protect the wood. Mm -hmm. I don't know what kind of good that's going to do now since the damage has already been done. Oh, this is looking at that um, the same starboard side, but looking aft. Correct. Okay. And this... I'm sure you can comment about this one. This is the hallway, right, for the Ghosts and Legends? Right. So, yeah, you're looking aft on in the uh, from the third-class uh, entryway area. You see some... Uh, you know, I really am not quite sure. This flooring does not match the flooring on the port side. Mm -hmm. And I have wondered uh, of where the origination of this flooring came from. I think this was possibly flooring that was done in the early 70s. It, it does not match the flooring of the, of the original dining room. Jeez. One of the uh, – this would actually be occupying what was the uh, the uh, Turkish baths of the uh, first class area. We're alongside the, uh, the swimming pool here. Oh, really? Oh. So – okay, so – basically this hallway here right correct or... correct okay oh yeah and then this would have been where the turkish baths were this is uh this is more towards the center area of the of the third class restaurant you can see they removed the ceiling uh and the original walls this, these are new partitioned walls there is a a portion of a pantry that still exists um, it's, it's a dark and hidden portion. <laughs> uh, I believe it's off in the distance and then off to the right. The, uh, the pantry still exists today. It's a very large countertop space, almost like a bar. Oh my gosh. These look like original f fixtures from somewhere. That is a fixture from the long gallery. That and the one that's hanging from and off in the distance. Those are light fixtures from the long gallery. If anybody on here has been to the bottom of the third class staircase, it ends, uh, well, for, for regular passenger people today, it ends um, on our deck and there's some doors with windows and you can, uh, well, they're blacked out now, but in the past you could look through them and you would see this room. It's decorated with artifacts of the Queen Mary. So when when the third class dining room uh, was changed over to become table and chair storage uh, on our deck. Uh, a small portion, the center portion of the third class dining room was kept uh, almost pretty much as it was. And it was known for many years as the Pacific Room. It was, uh, it was supposed to be used for the sales department for a meeting room, but it was also available for any kind of special event that that might have needed the room as well. Um, in the later years, it was used for this uh, for this artwork display 
uh, which you can see here in the in the photograph. Um, it still maintains some of the original paneling, some of the original light fixtures. Well, folks, that was the history of the third class dining room from back then till now. This was an edited segment of our live stream series called Queen Mary's Lost and Abandoned Places. A link to the playlist will be provided on screen in just a moment, or you can check the description below. Thank you for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and comment below. For more stories on the architecture, engineering, and history of the Steam Age, make sure to subscribe. You can support me by either becoming a Patreon member or channel member, or you can help donate to my transatlantic voyage to the UK. Links and information are in the description below. Thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.